Everybody ready? Get your pencil and paper. Got your test in front of you. Uh, what do you know about a sprag clutch and a roller clutch? This is drivetrain test two. The sprag clutch and the roller clutch are two types of planetary gear sets used in automatic transmissions. Is that true or is that false? Huh? Really? It's not planetary gear sets, is it? What do they do? Basically, you got in, in an automatic transmission, you got several different you got different types of members. You got holding members because the planetary gear set is the heart of it. You got you're going to hold parts of the kit uh, of it. You're going to drive some parts, and other parts are going to be driven. Uh, but you got holding members, driving members, driven members, that kind of thing. So, uh, we're not getting too complicated on that. It's the uh, number two. It's the combination of rotary flow, a rotary flow, and vortex flow that actually makes the torque converter function. Does everybody understand how a torque converter functions? Okay. The way I like to do this is, if you've got two fans from out there in the shop that I got that I can put in here and plug in and I can plug in one fan and I can leave the other fan unplugged and I point those two fans at one another the one that's running is going to cause the other one to spin isn't it the air blowing through it and you've seen a fan turn when the wind hits it yeah. you know the little pinwheels yeah, the fan's going to work like a pinwheel okay so the part of the torque converter that's bolted to the engine has got a an impeller in it and it basically looks like a turbine of some sort, you know, like a jet turbine, except it's going to grab fluid. It's going to throw it against this, the actual turbine that's hooked to the inside of the transmission. And as that turns, the inside of the transmission gets the power it needs to drive the car down the road. And your planetary gear set, whenever your various different gears are met, using you know, different, uh, you know, you're going, you got a sun gear, you got a planet carrier, and you got a ring gear, and any of those can be held or driven in most of them. And then you got compound planetary gear sets and all that. We get into that a little heavier duty when we're in automatic transmissions proper. Uh, uh, if the stator one-way clutch problem is suspected, a stall test or a bench test can be run. What's the quickest one you can do? Now the stator is what, Joe? In a torque converter, what is a stator? Don't I have one that we can take apart real quick? Right over there. Show us the stator. Pick that up. That's a torque converter that's cut apart. It is cut apart. That torque converter is cut apart so you can take it apart. All right, now Joe is going to show us the stator. Okay, Joe, show us the stator. That's the stator, isn't it? Okay, now where is the one-way clutch in that stator, Joe? In the center. Can you demonstrate how it works? Not like this. Yeah, you can. It'll only turn one way. Turn it with the other way. See, it turns one way but not the other. That's what a I, stator does. It, it didn't turn. All I did was I turned this thing on my finger. Yeah, but go the other way now. No, you got to get it where you're, you're holding the center where you can't. Like See that? It won't turn with one direction. It's a one-way clutch thing. That's what the deal is on that. And that's basically, that's giving you torque multiplication because whenever the fluid has been thrown out of the impeller and it goes through the turbine, it circles around. And when it circles around, it goes through that stator, and the stator redirects the fluid, so it'll go back into the impeller and give it the maximum amount of uh, power, and, and it multiplies torque. If the one-way clutch in that stator is bad, and it actually is, you know, when you're looking at the front of an automatic transmission, you got a, a big set of splines and a little set of splines, right? And in front of it, the big set of splines is a stator support. That's where that stator rides. And when you slide the torque converter in, uh, whenever you're putting it in there, that's what a lot of people don't think about. When you're putting a torque converter in, it's not just as simple as sticking it in there. What do you got to do, Moody? You got to hold it, turn it, and it goes dunk, 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 and it's got several little clunks going in. It's got to go over what? What's it got to go over? Stator support, the turbine shaft, what else? The pump. The pump is actually turned by the, I mean, uh, is actually turned by the engine by way of the torque converter because it's got those slots or some flats on it, something like that. Okay, so we got that one there. So one number one was false, number two was true, number three was true, and number four was true. The Simpson gear set is the most common type of planetary gear set at the time this test was written anyway. Lock up, chuggle. Now whenever you hear the word chuggle, realize that whoever wrote the test is a, is a big GM person. Because if you're reading, I have never read the word chuggle in anybody's book except for GM. Um, 
lockup chuggle refers to vibration that occurs during a plier release of the lockup clutch or after the lockup occurs. That's false. The stator one way clutch like can, huh? No, it's actually a GM thing. I mean, it's a GM word, you know. It's got to do with a shutter, you know, the way I understand it. But anyway, um, the stator one way clutch can fail only if the clutch is constantly locked. No, it can fail either way. How would you know? Do you know what a stall test is? Tell me what a stall test is. You go out there in your car and you put it in drive, have your foot on the brake and the gas. You stomp on the gas. You lock the park brake. You make sure that not, there's nothing in front of you for you to run into. You stand on the brake as hard as you can with your left foot. You put with it in drive, and it's good to have your transmission pressure gauge hooked up and be watching the tack, too. You go all the way to the floor with the gas pedal, and where the, where the tachometer stops, yeah, if the tires are spinning, you're not doing a good stall test because you haven't stalled it. But if you've got good solid brakes and you got the park brakes locked, and like I say, don't let anything... You got to recognize the fact this thing may get away from you and run off. Even at the assembly plant, sometimes uh, you would see where they have a dyno up there where they have the cars chained down, and occasionally they didn't chain it down good enough, so the car would jump off the dyno and run down there and run into a wall somewhere. But they got it sort of opened up down there, you know. Uh, but the long and the short of it is, a stall test is giving you an idea. If the stall speed is, is higher than what the book says it's supposed to be, that means your torque converter uh, stator one way clutch has failed because you're not getting the torque multiplication. And we found those by accident on, a, on a, nearly a brand new expedition that belonged to shop foreman over there. We were looking for an engine skip, and I was brake torquing it, and I noticed it was stalling at 1800 RPM. And I looked up in the book, and it was supposed to stall at 29. Now he couldn't tell driving anything wrong, but I had actually I had actually determined that the torque converter, I mean that the stator in the torque converter had gone lousy, and he had put torque converter in it. Uh, also, if the engine's underpowered, you'll have a problem with low stall speed. So you need to make sure your engine's got plenty of power and all that. Now, when you guys do your racing stuff, uh, your, you want your stall speed to be high, don't you? Uh, now, do you all drag or round track? You drag. So you're round tracking. you got a skinny little torque converter you put in there. It's real little. And when you're getting on it, you want your, you want your stall speed to be high. Why? Do you know? You ever thought about that? Nobody ever explained it to you, probably. You want, it to be, you want to be in your power curve. You want the engine to be as strong as it can be, holding still. And whenever they the, they go, you know, red, yellow, green, and the light turns green, you, all you're doing is letting off the brake, and you're already in your 3,600 RPM yeah. peak of your power curve, and you just sort of jump out of the hole. I mean, that's what that's the reason you have a stall speed converter that has a higher stall speed, because you are got more power right out of the chute. That uh, uh, converter is a major... Thing. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, you actually are, and the ones that are, that one's a kind of a big fat one, but those uh, stall speed converters that are stalling you at 35, 36, 3800 RPM are little skinny things. I mean, if you pull one out, it's, yeah, it's only about that, it's a little bitty skinny thing, you know, and it's for racing people, uh, but anyway, uh, yep, all right, so most, uh, most planetary gear checks are simple visual inspections for damage and wear. Is this true or is this fault? Somebody, come on, Moody. What do you think? That's true, isn't it? Hmm? You can't air test a planetary gear set because there's no clutches there. Uh, th the clutches are all hooked to different parts of it. The Ravino gear set operation is the same as the Simpson gear set. Now, that's pretty much true. Uh, the primary cooler for the fluids in the transmission is located beside the transmission. Mm, yeah. Where is it located? On the radiator. In the radiator or in front of the radiator, right? It's one of them things. Uh, the most common type of in-vehicle test is a converter leak test. That's false. Basically, you're going to do a line pressure test, you're going to do a stall test and all that. And when you're doing your line pressure test, you're going to do your stall test with your pressure gauge hooked up, and you're going to see where, the, where all those pressures are. There's a window that they're supposed to be in in each gear. You don't stall test it, obviously, in neutral or park, because they're not in gear. You know, you'd be revving it up out there. You know, some of this stuff just is spooky if you're not familiar with what's going on and how to do things. Like some of those power stroke diesels, if you want to check for friction modifiers that are broken down in the oil on the old 7.3s we used to work on, you're supposed to watch your, with your scan tool and pull your uh, inject your control pressure up and just floorboard the accelerator and hold it there for three minutes and just let it thunder and see if it got up above a certain uh, pressure. And if it did, then your uh, friction modifier, I mean your uh, foaming additives in the oil had broken down, you had to do oil change. So 
but anyway, uh, but I would tell you this, that when you're doing that, you need to do like Elvis and leave the building because the guys in the other service base are not going to be happy with you if you just do that and they're over here, can't hear their radio or each other talk or their self think or nothing else. So go out in the back parking lot and do it out there so that nobody is really bothered by the fact that it's sitting there with... Yeah, well, on the newer ones, they don't smoke hardly. You know, they're no small. As a matter of fact, you can walk up one of them, uh, the newer Power Stroke Diesel, and you can do the white glove test on the inside of the tailpipe. You won't get nothing. They're that clean. Air's cleaner coming out than it is going in. All right, let me see here. Uh, in a synchro mesh transmission, the gears slide into and out of engagement. Now, this is what you got there. This is talking about manual transmissions, right? Oh, come on. That's falsy. Uh, what slides? What moves, Moody? What's the only gears that slide into and out of engagement on a manual transmission? There's one gear where you're actually moving the gears so that they're, remember? Manual, you did manual transmission, reverse. No, we're doing that now. Reverse, oh okay, reverse is actually the only one that moves. Yeah, you're right, you're, only, you're doing it now. Uh, so you're doing this and that, aren't you? Okay, that's good stuff. But reverse is the only one that actually moves. The rest of them are actually done a different way and you'll just talk about that later. The number of internal shafts in a manual transmission depends on the number of forward speeds. That is false. Uh, large gear ratio multiplies torque. Does it? Uh, yes. Four to one, four turns of the engine to one turn of the, yeah, you're multiplying torque. Uh, in low gear, the drive gears have fewer teeth than the driven gear. This increases torque and reduces speed to the drive wheels. That, what do you think? The drive gear, if it only has a few teeth, it turns a lot and the big gear doesn't turn much and you got a lot of power that way, right? So that's true. We're getting there. We're almost done. The most torque needed. The most torque is needed when the vehicle is moving quickly. No. No, that's not right. Anybody that's ever driven knows that. Uh, hey, you know how you find an engine skip this? This, you know, this doing the the bite, the drop out. How do you do that? Forty-five degrees up the incline. Forty-five degrees. Yeah, we did that on that Ford truck. And then. Uh, 45 miles an hour with it, with it in the highest gear it'll go in with a torque converter lock, you crowd the throttle just a little, not enough to make it downshift. Is that that's what the, we were trying to do with that Mitsubishi that one day? Uh -huh. yeah. That's the heaviest load you're going to put on it, right there. Now, you know, uh, a lot of times people feel like... I will tell you there was a guy that had a 65 Mustang that brought in there and wanted me to tune it up because he said it, he didn't like the way it was running. And it was, this was restored. It was a brand new looking car. It was a 65 model. And uh, so I put spark plugs in it and points in the distributor and all that kind of stuff. And so he went to drive it after I got through, and he was tacking that thing out to about 8,000 RPM, and it would cut out a little bit at that speed. And I said, good grief. You think I'm going to take somebody's fully restored 65 Mustang and drive it like that? I don't do that. <laughs> Not even to, you know, new car. It's ridiculous. But anyway, it had a one of the spark plugs was boots was not seated in the distributor good, and I don't know when that happened or how it happened, but I didn't have to see that as a problem but when I put my scope on it I found it you know so whatever all right let me see uh, when the driver shifts the transmission into high gear engine speed increases false what if I'm driving down the road with manual transmission and I got it in a you know a high gear and I go to apply the throttle speed up without changing gears and I see the engine speed picking up but I mean the engine speed picking up but the vehicle speed is staying about the same what does that mean no, it means the clutch is slipping. Think about it. Engine speed's changing, vehicle speed's not. Well, if you've ever felt that, that's a slipping clutch every day. Are you doing those manual transmission things I put out here? No? All right. All right. Now, the, the quicker you get them done, the better off you'll be. But, all right. The, uh, let's see. The synchronizer sleeve connects the transmission to the shift lever. Is that true? That's false. One day Eddie had a transmission down there and the the little fork, the shift fork uh -huh. was in those uh, sh synchronizer sleeves, you know, and it's got little inserts that go in that synchronizer sleeve and it was, they were gone. The little dogs that went into the synchronizer sleeve groove was not there anymore. And it was just so pretty. I mean, whenever you went to move that fork, it would just go all around that synchronizer sleeve. And you know what was wrong with that? It was in the, the one for third and fourth. Uh, I think it was, or maybe fifth in reverse. Anyway, he, the guy was riding along with his hand on the gear shifter. And he kept putting that pressure on it over a long period of time until it machined all that crud. 
they had a pretty good shift fork in it. Most of the stories you talk about about stuff here on campus, uh -huh. it either starts out in there, yeah. here, or at the welding shop. Yeah, that's usually what it is. You know, the, yeah, the, we, we have lots of fun here. That's what we do. That's a, we do lots of smooth things. Um, let me see. Cable linkage is the most common kind of transmission shift linkage. False. That's what, what is the most common kind? True. Hydraulic. Huh? Hydraulic. Well, I don't know if I've ever seen any hydraulic shift linkage. No, I'm just thinking. He's like he's talking. About, I think he's talking. About, I think he's talking clutch. Yeah, the he's thing thinking. you made was what made me laugh. I wasn't laughing. Yeah. Just well, I was just trying to. I was trying to part. I don't want to discard anything. Yeah, he was thinking clutch, but I don't want to discard anything anybody says because sometimes you get in trouble that way. If you say, "Oh, that's a bunch of hogwash," then you find out what they really meant. You say, "Oh, you're right." You know, so I don't want to be careful. And when I'm arguing with somebody, I'm typically going to say, "Well, I may be wrong, but I thought it was this way." And that way, if I turn out to be wrong, I left myself an out. <laughs> you know, say, I may be wrong, but, you know. Okay, uh, before disassembling the transmission, you should inspect each component for damage or wear. True. The ones you can't How can you do that if you haven't in, in, taken you it apart yet? Here's another thing. I've always said this. People would bring my dad a transmission, a uh, manual transmission, and they say, uh, this transmission was noisy. Can you rebuild it for us? And he said, nope. I say, why? He goes, because it needs to be in the car so I can drive it and listen to it. Because you can't look at those gears and tell if they're bad. They'll be noisy. They can look good and be noisy as I'll get out. And so they say, put it back in the car. Let me drive it. I'll pull it out. I'll fix it. I'll put it back in. I guarantee it won't make noise. But if you just bring me one on the back of your pickup, want me to rebuild it? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. now, we got a Liberty class B transmission in one of red cars, and you're just pushing it around and make a whole lot of noise. Huh. Is it make it, does it make more noise in, uh, when you're driving it in one gear than it does the other? Uh, it's just the way it is when it's uh, moving. Oh, yeah. Uh, pushing it around. Yeah. It Noisy as I'll get out. You got on, on, on a manual transmission, even if it's working right, you're going to have some gear roll over when you get your foot on, you know, whenever the it's in neutral and the engine running, because the gears are in there going to be whirling. Even if they're not going on, you'll hear them. Blah, 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 blah. And some people get confused about that. They haven't driven a manual before. Okay, the, the installation for a process for a transmission is the same as the removal process. Does the word dumb question come to mind? When I'm pulling it out, I'm screwing the bolts out and I'm pulling it out. When I'm putting it back in, I'm screwing the bolts back in and putting it back in. Those are exactly opposites, aren't they? That's a bit literal, though. Yeah, I know. We don't, are you a concrete thinker? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, by this, if somebody gives you a piece of paper, like my, uh, my, my grandson, they gave him a piece of paper and they were trying to teach him to color by number. And they says, color the one green. And he was supposed to color the whole circle and he just colored the one green. <laughs> That's a concrete thinker. I mean, you know, he, he's doing what they said. You know, they didn't say color the inside of the circle green. They said color the one green. I'm coming. All right. There's my lunch partner. It's time for me to go. <laughs>